this is our CO2 uh, container slash maker. And just a quick review, this is what where the reaction happens and then it produces CO2, it goes in here and from there you can put it in the tank. That's the basic idea of this rig here. But I'm going to be teaching you guys how you need to, uh, every day in the morning, just, just in the morning, not in the afternoon, just in the morning, how you're going to add CO2 to the tank. So in the tank, there is an inverted beaker, just like this little tube that's flipped upside down, and the bottom is like empty. What you're going to do is this hook will be down in the water, and it will be hooked up under that. And all you have to do is come over to this valve here. This valve right here, not this one, this one. And you're just going to open it up. And it'll let CO2 out into the inverted beaker. And like underwater, it'll bubble up. And when it fills up to that, you want to turn this valve off really quickly. So like if you're just holding it there, you want to have your hand on the valve, like, and then stop. So, you know? So, yeah, that's how this is basically going to work. Sometimes when you are adding the CO2, you might find when you open the valve that no bubbles come out, like nothing happens. If this does happen, you want to make sure the valve here is sealed, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to shake the muddy, brown, mucky, uh, bottle. You want to shake it up, and what that will do is, as you can see, it's producing bubbles. It'll reboot the CO2 system and it'll work. And always remember to close off the valve, which means like to tighten it when you're finished. So the first step is to drop your hook in and make sure it's hooked around the valve like so, or around the tube. Step two is to look down here at the valve and you're going to turn it to the left or just loosen it. If you find this tricky, you can have a classmate or a friend hold the J hook up and then you can loosen the valve because it is tough. To... But once you do that, you'll notice the bubbles begin to rise and now you have to watch that line until it reaches the bottom and you have to turn you have to turn the valve and close it before it like expands over so you let it keep going and we'll stop at the end like so you tighten the valve up so that it's not letting any holes out bring this out and your job is done So what's actually going to happen in the tank, you might be wondering. Um, when you add CO2 to the tank, a few of the effects that it has is it increases plant growth, because plants consume carbon dioxide, which is what CO2 is, and then they release O2. So what this will do is it'll improve plant growth, and since they consume carbon dioxide and release oxygen, it'll provide more oxygen in the tank. and it will also lower the pH, which is not necessarily a good thing, but for us it's kind of good because we wanted the pH lower, if you remember from the last uh, part, I think it was part five. And so, yeah, it's gonna lower the pH, increase plant growth, and increase oxygen levels, which are all good things in our case. So here we're gonna feed them some live baby brine shrimp. So you guys have been doing a great job feeding the tank and we're actually going to be adding um, a new kind of food. These are veggie mini pellets and they're just a slightly larger pellet and they're really good for cichlids 
and it provides a variety, it gives them some veggies, and would have some more like protein options. And so it gives it a very um, a, a wide variety of diet, which is really healthy for fish and anything.